logic that remembers latch and unlatch instructions and then eventually seal in logic both of those are methods of producing or creating logic that remembers past events in your manual we had you open up a former project two rungs within out and it should have looked like this if it didn't not to worry just edit the logic on your screen or if it's something else save it and then rename it and then edit it to look like this or if you want more exercise with RS Logix 5000 create a new project add your IO modules create any tags that go along with those IO modules if you're not using the IQ6 XOW4 and then continue from here. So looking at this code, these two rungs of logic, if someone were to ask you to put these into words, in other words, to speak what these rungs say, you might say, rung zero says, that if local 1i data zero, that bit is off in memory, then turn on local 10 data dot zero, that bit in memory. Whereas rung one says that if local one i data zero that bit is on in memory, then turn on local one o data zero that bit in memory. Although this is true, those are both true statements. It is not a complete statement of the logic. Remember that when a computer program executes, it does not. It does exactly what you instruct nothing more nothing less it does not read your mind you may or may not be making an assumption like most of us but I would assume that if the rungs are not true then the bits would be turned off without knowing ladder logic you might assume that I think many people would have because electrically if you don't have a complete path then the coil de-energizes and this logic does behave that way, but that's not what we stated in the logic. So let's restate those two rungs. The complete logical statement for rung zero says that if local one I data zero, that bit is off in memory, then turn on local one O data zero, that bit in memory, else turn it off, that bit in memory. And rung one says that if local one i data zero that bit is on in memory instead of off on in memory, then turn on local one o data zero that bit in memory, else turn it off that bit in memory. If you want to set a bit in memory to one, that is turn it on, you have to instruct it as so. Consequently, if you want to set a bit in memory to zero or turn it off, you have to instruct it so. The emphasis that we are presenting here is that the OTE, Output Energize Instruction, has a rung true execution and a rung false execution. If the rung is true, it sets the bit that it is addressing to one or to say turn it on. And therefore, if the rung is false, the instruction sets the bit that it is addressing in memory to zero or turns it off. Not all output type instructions have both a true and a false execution. With your project in the offline mode, we'll change ours to offline. Open and place your cursor after the zero on this memory location. Change it to one. We're moving away from the logic that chattered the scan dependent logic that we did in a former lab where we were, had two OTEs addressing the same memory location. Now they are addressing two separate memory locations. That was the easiest method of editing the memory location that this instruction is addressing, but not the only way. You could have opened the addressing field, dropped down the list, drilled down a bit one of that same tag, and then selected it. Remember that the memory location is just text. You can drag and drop memory locations. You could have dragged this one over. Assuming we don't have that one that has an O in it, you could have drugged this one over. Change the I to an O. It could be lowercase too. 
see? And right away, it recognizes that as a legitimate tag. That's why you see the reverse video on the rest of it. Then we'll put in a one, and we end up with the same thing. This is kind of like working with a word processor. To further demonstrate this, double click on rung number one. You see right here, that's just text. That is how this rung is stored. When you save your project, rung one is stored like that, right there. XIC, that's that instruction. Local one I data zero, that's that memory location. OTE, local one O data one. In the manual, I had you compare the string of text to the right of the designation rung one and the display configuration in the ASCII text with that rung of logic. Because there are some people that sit and type in the logic in this form and don't actually use these symbols. Now they end up with these symbols because if you create a new rung with those symbols, when you hit enter, the rung's gonna pop in here in this form, not in this form. But I have met folks that, people, engineers, technicians, that program more with text than they do with icons or symbols. Notice this says in neutral text, okay? You can also select in ASCII text. Now watch the line there. See, you saw some delimiters disappear. See, you've got open parentheses, close parentheses, open parentheses, close parentheses. And in ASCII text, you've lost the parentheses and you lost this semicolon on the end when you went to ASCII text. This is actually what I see people type in. They type in ASCII text, not neutral text. Uh, personally, I prefer the ASCII text more readable than the neutral text. We are at a beginning level here, so we're not gonna worry about this, whether it's ASCII text or neutral text. I just wanted to point that out. You do not re need to remember these details to write programmable automation controller programs for the Logix engine. This is shown to emphasize that this logic is just text, and you can edit text any way you like. If it looks right and your rungs are accepted, no E's at the head of the rung, then it is right. The context is good. And remember that if you export your logic, you can export it to a spreadsheet or to a Word document, and it's gonna look like this. So you could actually write your logic in a text editor and then import it into this routine, and it's gonna look just like this. Okay, save your project as Beginner L, whatever your processor number is, OTL underscore OTU. We go up here and we look at what we have. We want to go to File, Save As. We go down here to Two Rungs with In Out, L underscore A, OTU, and there you have it. Beginner L31 OTL for Output Latch, underscore OTU for Output Unlatch. Save. Now, it's probably better to save the program is before you start editing it just to make sure you don't accidentally overwrite the older program that you needed to, to start this one. Download and go online with your program in the remote run mode. All input switches in the off position. And by the way, make sure that you turn on your digital field device simulator. Communications, who active. Wait till it sees the processor. It sees it. Download. Remote run mode, we could do it with the key switch or from the online menu. I typically do not use the key switch because I'm probably sitting at a table on a chair out on the factory floor with a wireless router that I have in the control panel or connected to the controller in the control panel. I could be sitting a hundred yards away. I'm not about to run over, open the panel door and operate the key switch. Typically, I always do it from the online toolbar. Might as well get used to it. Okay, all switches are in the off position. And in the manual, we pointed out that this bit is off and that makes this instruction true and turns this bit on. 
This bit is off, so this instruction is true that turns this bit on. This bit is off, same bit in memory, therefore this is false, it turns that bit off. If I flip the switch, this is false and this is true. Because this is false, it, false, it turns off that bit in memory. Because this is true, it turns on that bit in memory. These are two different bits now. We're not still exercising OTE instructions against the same bit in memory like we were before. You normally don't write code that way. We did that to demonstrate a behavior in something not to do. This is more typical of what would be correct. If the switch is off, then that indicator is lit. If the switch is on, then this indicator is lit. And you can see that on your digital field device simulator. The two illustrations in the manual, if they're not totally clear to you, stop and work with it until it is or back up and start over. Do not proceed unless you understand the difference between read, write, true, false, and on, off. Now, it just so happens that on our digital field device simulator that this bit will say the circuitry connected to the screw terminal that influences that bit memory is a, has a special input if you have the digital field device simulator. In the on position, which it is right now, if I push the push button next to it, it goes off. There is a normally closed contact and using a symbol that looks like a normally closed to turn something on. Now you could go double negative in your thinking if you want. I wouldn't because the fact that this screw terminal is connected to a normally closed push button at this moment has nothing to do with this symbol that looks like a normally closed contact. It separates those that do from those that don't. That is not a normally closed contact. That's not a normally open contact, although these symbols did originate from those electrical symbols. And w this symbol right here electrically would be a normally closed contact controlled by a coil, a relay coil. This would be a normally open symbol controlled by a relay coil. If the coil is de-energized, then this is closed. If the coil is energized, then this is closed. You could say that if that coil or that bit in memory is off, then that contact is closed. If this bit in memory or coil is on, then this contact is closed. You need to forever walk away from normally closed, normally open when looking at relay logic. True if off. This instruction is true if that bit is off. This instruction is true if that bit is on. Next thing we want to do is, we, we could double click, by the way, on rung zero. We could double click and puts it in the edit mode. We'll close that. However, I wanted to show you another method. And that is, if you, and look up here, see that that's grayed out, start pinning rung edits until I pick a rung. Now it's not. If I click on it, that puts it in the edit mode. The same as if you double clicked on the head of the rung. I find it easier to double click on the head of the rung than to actually use this button up here. So you see there was, that's two ways you could do it. You could double click on the head of the rung. You can select the rung and then select this button, start pinning rung edits, or you can right click on it, start pinning rung edits. You see the same symbols you see up there for the button. That puts it in the edit mode. Okay, we're going to open up this instruction. You were not able to do this with the MicroLogics, but if I double click on the instruction, I can bring up a list of instructions. You see there's quite a few. Considering that most of these you can expand to expose quite a few more instructions. I don't know how many there are here, but there's a bunch. However, we're after the easy stuff. We basically want to change this to an OTL, output latch. Double click, it's an OTL. I could very easily have done the same thing by double clicking and then editing the E to an L and then hit enter. So we'll do that with this one. Double click, well it's not in the edit mode. Put it in the edit mode by double clicking. Open it up and then I can replace it with a U. It doesn't have to be uppercase, but it goes in as uppercase. And there we have both rungs edited. 
which you did in your manual. In the manual, I did this in a slightly different order. Nonetheless, it will work out the same. It appears that you have four rungs now. Zero, one, two, and three, and indeed you do. However, rungs one and three with an R in front of them, see the lowercase r, they are the two rungs that are actually running right now. So if I flip the switch off, see they do change state. And it looks like all the rungs are running, but they're not. Only the ones with the R in front, with the power rail highlighted, these are not running. They are in a insertable form, I for insert. While watching the state of the logic and with the switch represented by memory location uh, input data zero, and with the memory location output data zero controlled by the logic, alternate the switch from on to off positions repeatedly. Now we, we already did that and you can see that it does show whether these instructions are true or false and it shows whether these bits are on or off. Does the animation highlighting of true, false, and on off in rung zero depict the state of the instructions and bits in memory? Yes, it does because the highlighting reflects the true-false condition here. The highlighting over here reflects the on-off condition. The reflection of on-off here, the fact that that's a latch and that's an unlatch instruction is irrelevant to the state of those bits in memory or the state of these instructions. So the, it's the state of these instructions and the state of these bits in memory. How many rungs appear to have influence over the memory location local one output data zero. Well you might say that there's two that appear remember appear to have influence. How many actually do have influence? Only one. This one right here, the one that's actually running with the lowercase r's. The eyes in front of rung zero indicate that this rung is untested and ready to be inserted in place of rung one. The R's in front of rung one indicate that it is R for running. Put rung two into the edit mode as you see in the manual and open your instruction. It was an OTE. We've already done this but I'm going along with the manual. With your cursor placed just to the right of the OTE press the backspace key then U and then enter key. Edit the address bit to be zero. So now we're changing the memory location. We can't edit this wrong. We have to edit this one, the one with the eyes in front. We double click there. We can backspace, zero, enter. Okay, now we've got our editing done. Now you have four rungs of logic. How many are just proposed edits? Two. Which ones? Rung zero and rung two. One and three are running. Zero and two are proposed edits. They're there for you to see what you've done as a proposition or a preliminary edit, but the edit is not actually finished. You're editing a copy of rungs one and three. How many are actually running in the program execution? Two, which ones? One and three, the one with R's in front of them. Try to edit the instructions or memory locations within the rungs of logic that are actually running. Were you able to? In other words, can you edit this tag right here? Double click on it, nope, double click, nope. So you can't edit a rung that is running. The, so the answer is were you able to is no. We have two rungs of logic in the edit mode. You can finalize all edits with just a few clicks by clicking on the finalize all edits button. That's this one right here. Finalize all edits in the program. We used to call that the lawyer button because with RS Logix 500 and RS Logix 5, the lawyers wouldn't let us, wouldn't let Rockwell Automation, Alan Bradley, have that finalize all edits. You had to accept, test, and assemble, and it took three, four mouse clicks in order to what you can do now with just one or two. So we'll click on that and this would finalize all edits, so we'll say no. You can right click here and you can accept pending rung edits. That's what we're going to do. So we're only working with rung zero now. We'll say rung zero and one. Accept pending rung edits. 
Notice now that's capitalized, uppercase R and uppercase I. That means that it's been accepted, but it's still I for insert. Then you could go up here and do a test, test accepted program edits. You've accepted the edits, now you can test them. Now they're tested and you can assemble the accepted program edits. And now rung zero has replaced rung one, but now it's just rung zero. Double click on rung zero to put it back into the edit mode. Then select finalize all edits. Yes, and you're done. Uh, unless, of course, there's errors or problems. Now, in this case, there's no errors and no warnings. And they're not, there's not even minor warnings about duplicate destructive bits that we had when we had two OTEs addressing the same bit memory. See, now we have two instructions addressing the same bit memory. First thing you notice here, since we have that switch on, the circuit, the switch in the field circuit that's connected to the screw terminal on the input module associated with this bit in memory is on, but this is not on. Because this instruction says if the rung is true, turn off this memory location. This instruction says if the rung is true, then turn on this memory location. Here is the logic as we have it now. If the switch is off, then latch that bit on, turn it on. If the switch is on, then turn it off. We're addressing the same bit in memory with these two instructions. Whereas in the other application, we were addressing the same bit in memory, but those were OTE instructions that have a true and a false execution. These do not have a true and a false execution they only have a true execution. The difference in these two sets of rungs is that the earlier version with OTEs, Output Energized, had output type instructions that had a true and a false execution and if the IO update came at the wrong time it changed the output in between the two rungs. The current logic is using output instructions or it, I, you could say rung zero is using an instruction that has a true execution only as well as rung one. Both of those output type instructions, OTL and OTU, have true execution only. If the rung is false, they don't do anything. These two instructions together simulate an electromagnetic switching device called a latching relay. You all know that a relay is a switch operated by an electromagnetic field influencing the, influencing the position of that switch. When you energize the coil, the position changes. When you de-energize it, it returns to the normal or resting position. A latching relay has contacts that are mechanically latched in the energized position and remain so even if the relay coil de-energizes, hence the term latched. To unlatch the contacts, there is a second coil, an additional coil, that influences the locking mechanism to release the latched contacts when the second coil is energized. The coils are named set and reset respectively, latch and unlatch. So it's, there are two coils. So when you look at our instructions here, these are two different coils, but they're addressing the same bit in memory. So see, this departs somewhat from a real tight analogy with a relay coil and contacts. Nonetheless, this turns the bit on if the rung is true, this turns it off if the rung is true. As with the latching relay, once the latch instruction is executed and the bit is set to one, repeated changes of the state of the rung have no effect at all. This is because the OTL does not have a false execution like the OTE does. Consequently, the OTU instruction can reset a bit to zero, but repeated execution has no effect whatsoever. So if this were an actual latching relay with two coils, electromagnetic relay, and we turned on that coil to latch 
the contact open, then if you continue to exercise this wrong, false true, false true, nothing's going to change here. And it wouldn't on an actual relay either. Because if you turn on the latching coil, the contact changes position and latches. If you turn it back off, it doesn't unlatch. If you turn it back on, it doesn't latch again. Once it's set, it's set. Consequently, with the unlatch instruction or the unlatching coil on a real electromagnetic relay, if you turned on this coil and unlatch the contacts and let them go back to the resting position and then turned off this the voltage here and then turn it back on again, repeatedly energizing this coil cannot further unlatch the contacts. These instructions do work identical philosophically to a latching relay. Next we had you take and grab a rung up here, mouse over, bring it down. See you got the, these are rung memes. There's many memes, but you see that the instruction memes don't light up when you are dragging a rung. Then I had you add some instructions. I had you add a true if off and an energize output. Then I had you mouse over this tag, not the instruction, the tag. Hold the mouse down. Now you're looking at memory location memes or tag memes. Not the same as a rung meme, not the same as an instruction meme. meme. Drop it here and then mouse over this one and drop it here. Then we had you edit the tag name. Finalize all edits. Now you have a third rung, but it's not working with the same memory locations of the first two rungs. Looking at our logic as a whole, including our new rung, rung two, which output bit does the state of local one I data zero influence? This bit right here, same bit, local one colon O dot data dot zero. Which output bit does the state of local 1i data.1 influence? Just this bit. So we have two instructions here influencing this bit, and we have one instruction influencing this bit. To emphasize the difference between an OTE that has a true to false execution and an OTL with a true only execution and an OTU with a true only execution, we have this logic in front of you. And the manual says, while well, observing the state of the two output bits, which are these two bits right here, zero and one, flip both inputs to the on position, take a look at the state of those bits, zero and one, and then to the off. Do you see any difference between the influence of input zero on output zero and the influence of input one on output one. No. Occasionally we like to substitute input zero for bit zero of the input module's data word and the same for bit zero, output zero of the module word's data word. In other words, the language in the manual, we like to substitute some of these other tags that we showed you how to create just in case you did not have an IQ6XOW4. So we're, once in a while we'll remind you that you are maybe using some different I.O. structure. I hope not because for the cost of an IQ6XOW4, which you can buy them for as inexpensive as $70, $75 on eBay, I, bought, I purchased quite a few of them, never had one that was bad. I had one that had a broken screw in the that held the removable terminal block to the module, but it in no way affected its operation. I'd hate to think that for the want of $75 that you have introduced this convolution into your learning process. Nonetheless, once you get used to it, you're used to it. It's not going to hurt a thing. Using the editing procedures that you have learned, edit the instruction types to that shown in the next illustration. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to flip around the states that control the on and the off of the output bits. I'm going to do that really fast. Double click. 
double click, double click, change that to an XIO, change this to an XIC, change this to an XIC, finalize all edits, and we'll see if I got myself in trouble here by doing this on the fly in a hurry. So this is exactly what we show you in the manual. Before, this was off and this was off and all these showed on. Now without changing the, the positions of the switch, we change the instructions to be true in the opposite state. And you see you have the exact opposite thing over here. This is just to prove a point. So if I turn these both on, and both off, do you see any difference between the influence of input 0 and output 0 and the influence of input 1 and output 1? This is just to show you that in this form, that if you want to use an input device to turn on a bit when, the, when it's on or off and the opposite in the opposite state, you can use a latch and latch or you can use an OTE. You will see much better use for the latch and unlatch because obviously this rung of logic right here where you have a, it's true if on, or it could be true if off, but you have a true and a false execution is less programming than doing two rungs. So this is not a good use for latch and unlatch. What's the difference between the logic before the last edit and the logic now? Well, we basically said it. What we did is we changed or reversed the true state for that bit in memory and that bit in memory. So now the logic is just the opposite. If this if input 0 is on, then we latch output 0. If input 0 is off, then we unlatch it. And vice versa down here, vice versa. If input 1 is on, then we turn on output 1. If input 1 is off, then we turn off input 1. Okay, save your project and we're done with this section. By the way, when you save your project, you don't always have to upload tag values before saving the project. Personally, I think it's a good idea. The only, there's only two conditions or scenarios where I would not upload the tag values. One is if I did some things online, I made some edits, but I don't want to take the online data table values, tag values, and upload them over the top of the ones that I already saved because the ones that are saved offline on the hard drive or in RAM are the ones that I want to keep. I'm going to, or you just want to save time. If I say no, in this case, I don't care what those tag values are. I just don't want to waste the time waiting for it to upload the tag values, then save the logic.